Praise God. Welcome this morning. Come on, we invite you to stand and praise this morning. Are you ready? Are you excited? Hallelujah. Are you excited what the Lord has in store for you this morning? He's got a word for you. Amen. And encourage you just to open up your hearts this morning. He's got, he's got a word of encouragement. You're going to leave here blessed. I believe it. I feel it. I'm already blessed to be here. Wake, you should wake up this morning already with a song on your heart. It says amen. So come on, let's praise him. Let's give him our all this morning. He's so worthy. Praise you, Jesus. You're so worthy. Hallelujah. <laughs> Stop singing, singing, singing about you. I can't stop shouting. Whoa, I can't stop. I won't deny it. Nothing's ever gonna keep me quiet. You have saved my life. I can't stop singing. So freedom called my name when you found me. Now I see, now I see your love is shining light into my soul. Oh, now I know I'm yours forever. You won't let me go. Keep it quiet. You have saved my life. I can't stop singing. Oh, whoa, whoa. I can't stop singing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I can't stop singing. Like a river, you rushed in, stole my heart and covered all my sin. When you found me. I know your love is shining light into my soul. Oh, now I know I'm yours forever. You won't let me go. No, I can't stop singing, singing, yeah, singing about you. I can't stop shouting, yeah. Nothing's ever gonna keep me quiet. You have saved my life. Can't stop singing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I can't stop singing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I can't stop singing. Come on, put your hands together. Alive now, we're gonna rise up, nothing's gonna stop us now. We are your people living in your freedom, nothing's gonna hold us down. And again, we are alive now, we're gonna rise up, nothing's gonna stop us now. We are your people living in your freedom, nothing's gonna hold us down. Nothing's gonna hold us down. Singing, come on, singing, singing about you. I can't stop shouting. You ready? Whoa, yeah. can't stop. I won't deny it. Nothing's ever gonna keep me quiet. You have saved my life. Can't stop singing.
sing through you the mute will sing through you the dead will rise through you our hearts will praise through you the darkness flees through you my heart screams and i am free i am free come on won't you sing this after me i am free to run come on lift your voice
of my fear by side of the road hear you speak and won't let go fall to my knees as I lift my hands to pray got every reason to be here again Father's love that draws me in oh my eyes want to see is a glimpse of you all I need is you All I need is you, Lord, is you, Lord. All I need is you. All I need is you, Lord, is you, Lord. One more day is not the same. Spirit calls my heart to sing, drawn to the voice of my Savior once again. Where would my soul be without your Son? Gave his life to save the earth. I rest in the thought that you're watching over me. All I need is you.
Peace abounds in deepest water Your sovereign hand Will be my guide Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me You've never failed And you won't stop
and keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. For I am yours, and you are mine. Lift your hands up. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. See that spirit, where the spirit leads, I will follow. Where the spirit leads, I will follow. Let's hit that chorus one time. Everybody sing this. This is right here, timely today. Praise the Lord. And where the spirit leads me, I will follow. Spirit leads me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the water. Wherever you would call me, take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith would be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. We walk upon the Wherever you would call me, take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith would be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Hallelujah. Some people say, well, I hadn't seen the power of God. Where's the power of God these days? It's out on the deep. You can't get it on the bank, on the shore. I like the song right here. It says, lead me where my feet. How many of y'all know it's best to get out there where you can't touch anyway? Amen. You know God's holding you up. God's got you. But so many people in the church world are so fearful and they stay on the bank. They got one foot in the water. They like shallow. We like, I, I think of them as shallow Christians. They still got one foot halfway close to the world and one foot over in the church. And they see the power of God moving out there a little bit, but they don't want to get too far out, so they keep their foot right over here on the shores also, on the beach, amen? Kind of just, you know, we're a lot, of, a lot of beach Christians around here, amen? And we just want to be safe. But God don't want you to be safe. No, no, God is not looking for a bunch of safe, conservative believers. He wants somebody who will step out of the boat Walk on the water. Amen. Water walking people. These last days, I'm going to tell you right now, this casual Christianity is not working for anybody. Amen. you got to get out of the boat, step out, say, but Peter said, give me one word, Jesus, and I'll walk on the water. I'm tired of hanging out with these guys I'm in the boat with. They're not doing anything. You know what I want to do? I want to get out and walk around. I'm, I'm, you tell me to come, and I'm coming. Amen. He said, we're in the ocean. There's waters deep around here. He said, I don't tell me to come and I'll walk on the water with you right now. Stepped out of the boat and started walking on water. Water is something that takes people under, but it don't take us under. Amen. I'm walking on top of things that used to take me under, the world under, addictions. Amen. Amen. Everything. Why? I got a word from God now. Stepped out of the boat, left all them other people behind and walking on water. Amen. How many of y'all glad you're a water walking group right here? Amen. And see, only you know if you are or not. See, some of y'all clapping and saying amen right now, and you know you got one foot on the shore. You clapping because everybody else clapping. But it's, the Lord told me to tell somebody in here, it's time for you to push out into the deep. Oh, that's where it gets fun at. Amen. I'm, I'm talking about in the deep where you can't touch where you are not even, you know what? You're going out there trusting, amen? I'm going out there where my trust is without what? 
I don't have any borders on my faith and on my trust. I got no boundaries. Amen. I got a big God. My God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, shake three people's hand and tell them nice to see you this morning, Water Walker. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Glory to God. Yes. Praise the Lord. Good to see everybody today. Yes. Hallelujah. God is good. Miss Trish, if you could. Where's Trish? Where's she go? Come here, Miss Trish. Come here, Tim. Just let it stay on whatever screen is on right now. They're telling me any day now. Amen. Just don't let it be right now. Amen. Just hold up just a little bit and we'll, just not right now, but just it, today's fine, but just after about 1, 1.30, 2 o'clock be good. Amen. But we don't want that happening right here, right now, amen. We got enough nurses in the building to take care of us, though. I believe we got about 10 in here, and some of them are delivery room nurses, amen. Amen. Turn back around and face me if you would. I want y'all got you guys to pray with me with them right now. We believe in God, amen. How many of y'all glad that we have word to believe on, word to stand on, and we have the word of God that is an anchor for our souls? We don't go into any situation. There is no fear. There is nothing to fear, amen. Amen. Father, we thank you right now in Jesus' name. You've given us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. We thank you, Father, for the peace of God that passes all understanding. We thank you, Father God, that this will be a smooth delivery. We thank you, Father God, no complications. We thank you that Nevaeh is coming into this world to be a blessing. She's blessed to be a blessing. We thank you, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God. You give Trish and you give Tim wisdom, Father God, on raising Nevaeh. We thank you, Father God, she'll be raised up under the Word of God. We thank you, Father God, she'll be raised up around the power of God. We thank you in the name of Jesus, Father God, she'll be a mighty woman of God. In Jesus' name, we're seeing the end from the beginning right now, Father. And we thank you in Jesus' name. We call her blessed, call her strong, call her free. We thank you, Father God, right now the blessing of God is good upon her. And we thank you, Father God, you guide the hands, Father God, of the doctors. We thank you, Father. We don't know the exact day, but we thank you, Father God. God, you're guiding their hands. You're the great physician. And we thank you, Father God, that when she comes into this world, we'll thank you that we'll be her church family that will just love on her in Jesus' name. Everybody say it. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. You're a blessing. Praise the Lord. Stand up, Miss Gail. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hey, y'all re rejoice. Just rejoice. Amen. We've been rejoicing with Miss Gail for a while. Amen. Hallelujah. We're just standing and still believing. Amen. And looky here. Looky, looky here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Strong in the Lord. Amen. The power of his might. We thank you, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. You give power to the faint and to those who have no strength. You ignite. You increase strength. We thank you, Father God. Strong in the Lord. The power of his might. We thank you, Father God, right now for supernatural weight gain in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God. Everything she eats sticks. In the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father God. She's gaining weight supernaturally in Jesus' name. We believe it right now. We call it done right now. We thank you, Father God. She's gaining weight just looking at food. In the name of Jesus, we call her blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, everybody else does it, so you're going to do it too. Amen. Everybody. everybody. That can't, see, we got all this camera stuff. Man, I mean, I think it's really true. The camera puts on about 30, I think. Man, I'm like. Huh? Do that little old crop thing where you squeeze it in. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, we started our fitness class yesterday. Praise the Lord. Stand up, Ricky. Ricky here started our fitness class yesterday. A little old short workout, wasn't that? It was about two-minute workouts, two-minute two burst workouts. Amen. So really, if you can work out for two minutes, it's not a big deal. Just come on up here and 
It'll, you know, it's two-minute work. Is it? Oh, but it's two minutes, four or five sets, six. You don't stop. You, you can't breathe. And you're like, What's up? I can't, can't keep up. But it's good. Amen. You can already tell. You only need one day. Amen. You just untuck your shirt and don't worry about it. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Turning your Bibles to Habakkuk. Amen. Habakkuk. Taking up the offering today. That's uh, going to be the title of the message later right there. This is offering. And uh, that's all right. That, that can stay for now because that's going to be good too. <clears throat> Habakkuk chapter 2. Some of y'all were here Wednesday night. Brought your vision today. We're going to turn that in with the offering. Amen. You didn't bring it. Yeah, you know, it's okay. It's all right. It's Wednesday night. We talked about uh, this scripture. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2. It says, The Lord answered and he said unto me, Write the Write the what? Write the vision. Make it what? Plain. Write the vision down. Make it what? Plain. So that, that he may what? Run who reads it. How many of y'all are running a race in here right now? You're running a race for Jesus. Paul said, I am running my race. I've finished my course. I'm running my race. What is he running toward? The Bible says right here that when we're running our race, we are running toward the vision. Amen. And what it says to do is going to be a help to help you along for your refrigerator, for your wallet, for your pocket. He says, write the what? Vision down. Put it down on paper so you can look at it. And he says right here, write down the what? Write the what? Vision. Wednesday night we said that if you're going to write your vision, you're going to have to write it backwards. Amen. Some of y'all ought to say amen from Wednesday night that was here. Because you are not writing how to get to your dreams and visions. He says put your biggest vision, your biggest plan, your biggest goals on paper and put them out there because your God is big. Amen? Amen. Because you don't have to figure out how to get to the end. All he says right here is put down your biggest dream. How many of y'all have been putting down some big dreams this year? You got it down on paper and you said, you know what? I am running a race and I'm running toward that right there. Let me all run into it. The Bible says without a vision, the people perish. They're just hanging out, casting off restraint. They're just hanging on. They're living for every day, living for the weekend. How many of y'all remember high school? You lived for Friday night. Yeah, but now I'm looking a little bit farther than that. Amen. I have a vision, and that vision is what motivates me. It's what drives a believer. I've seen too many believers. Bible says, I mean, I've heard people, I get in church, and you get into work, and the Bible says this, that hope, Hope lost, hope that is lost, it says, I don't, I don't, let me quote it right, it says this, I said it the other night, it says that, uh, that where there is no hope, where there, when people cast off their hope, they cast off restraint. When they have no vision, the people perish. And then it says in the, in the Word, it says that when, the, when people are hopeless, they have no hope, they have no, they have no faith to, hope, to grab a hold to, because the Bible says this, now faith is the substance of things, what? hoped for and you have to have hope hope is important your dreams are there but your faith brings your hopes and your visions into your today amen let me spit that out again one time amen because i was trying to think of about three different scriptures hope brings your visions into your right now how many of y'all think you shouldn't just have a vision for revival you ought to see revival how many of y'all think you ought not have a vision for a new house you ought to live in a new house how many of y'all think you ought not have a vision for a new spouse? You ought to have the new spouse. Say amen. So what we're talking about right here, write the vision down, make it what? Plain, so that everybody is ready to run with it. And who's going to be the first person to read your vision is you. Amen. And you need to put it down, put it on paper, and re go to the next scripture. I'm trying to get to the next one in verse 3. Verse 3 says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time. Say, I have an appointment with my dream. I'm awake and I'm happy about my dreams. 
Amen. I have an appointment with all of my dreams coming true. See, here's how you run off depression, complacency. You get uh, over there and you put your dream down and you say, you know what? The vision is for a what? Appointed time. But, for the, but at the end, it will what? Speak and it will not now. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come. Everything I'm believing for, I'm going to have. Well, I said everything that I say, that I believe, that I have on the inside, I am going to have it one day. It says right here, I have an appointment set up with every one of my dreams. There's a day that's going to come where the Lord is going to say, Roddy, meet your dream. Dream, meet Roddy. This is him right here. Boom, there it is. I stepped on over into dreamland. Amen. Hallelujah. Too many people never see this because they don't understand. They're not looking at the end. They're looking at the right now. It says at the end it will what? Speak. It says there is an appointed time for you to walk right into your dreams. What has this life been like for me? I got saved September 19, 1995. I guess that's going on 18 years now. But you know what? It's amazing to me because every year gets better than the one before. Every year gets better and better and better and better. Didn't get in church. Didn't get religion. Got Jesus, the Lord of Lords, the author and the finisher of my what? Faith. Now every one of my dreams have come true. Didn't get some kind of religion. Didn't get anything like that. Got Jesus living on the inside. Amen. And how many of y'all think that if he's the author and finisher of your faith, he can bring everything that you're believing for to pass. But he says right here, the appointed time is going to come. I got an appointment with revival in this area. I got an appointment with every dream coming to pass. I got an appointment with everything that's on the inside of me to show up. Amen. And it says, write the what? vision that some people can grab hold of it and in this scripture right here he's talking to him he said put it down so the people can run with something for four years now going on this three three and a half since we got in the building on parton drive uh we got in there june of 2010 we moved here in uh new year's eve new, we got in we moved into the ministry here Ju uh, january of 2010 and June of 2010, we, came, we moved over to Parton Drive. But when we started, I want to go back and I want to show you some lot different service today. A whole lot different. Not anything like what we've done before. But, man, you'd be ready at, at any time. Amen. So go on, uh, go to the first screen. We got picture number one here. I want to show you where we, there, that right there is what you call the Holiday Inn. And I want to show y'all where we started casting vision at right here. And I'm going to put it right, that right there is the exact, exact room that I walked in and the first person I saw was Miss Gail right here. The very first lady I saw in this room, everybody else was late for church. And I walked into there and I said, is this a church? Me and Danielle were going to look for the church. We, were, we came down from Louisiana. We just heard there was this church over here on uh, John Sims Parkway. And we rode, kept riding beside Ruby Tuesday, kept riding beside Ruby Tuesday. GPS said, your destination is on the right. Your destination is on the right. I said, that's a Ruby Tuesday. <laughs> that's a Ruby Tuesday. What do you do? Now I looked behind it and there was a Holiday Inn. And I said, oh, I bet they're in one of those big ballrooms. And I bet it's just this big old ballroom type deal. And they'll be in there having church. We better hurry real, a little bit late. And I got up in there, it was like 10 o'clock. They started, I got there at 10.05, and Miss Gail was putting out books, and I said, is this a church right here? She said, yes, this is it. I said, well, praise the Lord, I'm getting on the front row. <laughs> we sat on the front row right here. Long story short, we started preaching in this very same room with some ladies I'm looking at right here, that whole row right there, amen, the whole, look at this, we, we might take a picture after church, amen. We got a lot of them sitting right here, right now. We would be leaving out one, one right now. That's sitting right. John, you got her seat too. But we won't call her name because she gets happy when I call her name. And she'd be listening on the CD. But you know what? We started casting vision. There would be times we would show up in this hotel room. This is the room. I remember that is a dry erase folding thing right there that opens up. And you can t put some notes out there. But we started coming in here preaching at this church. And we started some days had six people right there. Six people right there. What motivates you? What drives you? What pushes you is your purpose. It is your vision. Without purpose, you can't have any passion. 
Amen. I, how many of y'all know it wasn't anything every Sunday to get excited about going to that Holiday Inn? I had nothing to, oh, praise the Lord, I got five today. We got eight right here. Glory to God. But what was driving us was not what we were looking at. It was what we were looking to. And I promise you, if you can't get past looking at what you're looking at and start getting excited about what you're looking to, you're going to stay depressed your whole life. We walked into that hotel and we started saying, Niceville is in. And we still say, Niceville is in what? We didn't come to see a church. We didn't come to start a religion. We don't want Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Episcopal, uh, none of that stuff. We want Jesus to change radical change in people's hearts. Amen. And there they are right there. Glory to God. Sitting up in this hotel room. This is it. Y'all have heard me say it a lot. That hotel on Holiday Inn. Holiday Inn. I went out, got a picture right here. Said, here, I'm going to show them where it is. That's where we started this casting vision stuff right here. That was in, in 2010. And then in uh, the next, uh, we started believing. And you know, you know what the vision we cast to them was? We got to get out of this hotel room. We got to get a building. We got to get a building. We need to be in a building. Amen. So the next slide we see here, we got a building. You might laugh at it, and I did too. And Danielle said, ain't no way I'm going in that building. She said, that looks like a compound, one of them David Koresh looking things where somebody, everybody right by, you got to have faith to walk in there, amen? <laughs> we had church in that building. We had people get revelation in that building. We had people get set free in that building. We had people learn more about Jesus than they ever learned in their whole life, they told me. Amen. Right up in that building, and it was just a step of faith. Amen. Well, that was when it was just a driveway. We made a parking lot. We made, we put other stuff on it. But I had to put that on there because the vision that we cast in that Holiday Inn is what we ended up walking right, the appointment showed up. And the building came. Amen. Hallelujah. And then we started getting in there and we started having some church. But it wasn't always just real easy to show up. Go to the next slide. Next slide, you'll see, boy, we were having some major church in there. Go ahead, Big Daddy. There it is, right there. Praise the Lord. I mean, you might think, boy, they got in the building, now they're going to be, now there's about 12 sitting right there. And boy, I was excited. There wasn't nobody, I mean, a lot of those two were just like sitting there like this. <laughs> Only two of those on the screen are still here. But they were just sitting there. I've got a picture of one of the first services we had. I built that little old bitty 10-foot stage and put that banner on the wall, and I said, we're about to preach the gospel in this building. And every morning I had to come and get myself fired up, motivate myself, encourage myself. Amen? Amen. And we showed up in there, and you know what we started doing? It says, sow the what? Seed. What are we doing in this building? We're sowing the seed, the incorruptible seed, the, the everlasting seed of God's what? Word. And his word will not return void. But see, a lot of people, they can't stick with it long enough to get any results. They'll give it two weeks, two months, maybe even two years. But how long will you give it your whole life? Because watch this. So we started sowing the seed, started sowing the seed. The next slide right here, we have proof that watch the seed. What? Multiply. The Bible says this, that the, the word of the seed will multiply. See, that is a way different look than what we started with. We didn't start there. People would come over there, and I'd have friends come. They'd come to service. Man, it's going great, going great. It wasn't always going great. Man, there was times I thought, what in the world am I doing now? I could be a lot of different places, a whole lot of places right now. And I'm going in here with 12 people, and some of them don't want to even lift their hands, and they look at me like I'm crazy. but I'm going to go do what the Lord called me to do. I got a vision, amen? I got a vision, and I know this vision shall surely come. I got an appointment with my dreams, amen? amen. Oh, I got an appointment with all of my dreams coming true. And then after that happened, and we started filling up the parking lot, every service filling it up, everybody, sometimes people would run in, they say, Pastor, we don't have nowhere to park nobody. I said, put them behind the church. Put them somewhere else. Get them in. We're going to fill this one up because I know if we faithful over the little, God will put you ruler over much. That's what the Bible says. So you got to learn to be faithful when there is little. Say amen. I preached to four like it's 4,000. Amen. 
Why? Because I'm going to preach. Why? Because I got to be faithful when there's a little bit. So if I want to see much, God's going to say, you weren't faithful with those four. Why would I give you 4,000? In the hotel room, preaching just as hard and sweating just as much as I do right here in this building. And I want to know, I want you to know why. Purpose brings passion. None of y'all get me excited. <laughs> Amen. But the vision gets me real pumped up. And we have not seen anything. Amen. Because we got over here, and I, I want to put this, I want to show this right now. Because when we got about to this stage, see, I told y'all Wednesday night, put a three-year vision and a five-year vision on paper. Amen. I don't know what y'all did between Wednesday and today, but some people broke some things down. Amen. The Bible says, write the vision, make it what? Plain so that somebody could show up at your house, find that piece of paper, find that jump drive, find that PowerPoint, find that PDF and say, you know what? I see what they were going to do right here. They're written down right here. I mean, and they're not doing it so I can do it. It says, make it plain so that the vision will come. So we started casting big stuff because I wanted to see what kind of people we had in front of us because the Lord had already showed me what we're going to be doing. Go to the next slide if you would. There's what's coming right there, Big Daddy. We, I mean, I remember that picture right there. Huh? You don't have to get happy about it, but I sure get stirred up right there because we're not sitting in four walls of a church. That is a 18-wheeler dropped, tricked out with some, oh, wait, wait a minute. And the, the, see, what's going to happen is the side of that thing is going to, it's going to come down hydraulically, and we're going to pull up in neighborhoods in Tallahassee, neighborhoods in Biloxi, neighborhoods all over here, Crestview. We're going over it, wherever the Lord says go, and we're going to have two of them. Amen. Y'all remember that? See, I put this in front of about 18 people one Sunday morning. Whoa, hallelujah. And you know what? Here it is. I'm getting that long term. I'm going to put the long term in front of some of y'all right now. Some of y'all already looking at it like, that ain't going to happen. Watch it happen. You sit back and watch it happen. We're going to be driving up in that thing, and you're going to see that truck pulling into the town near you. Amen. And what we got, it's going to say on the side, gospel, gospel, the, the God, I don't even know what, it says on the front of this one, go ye. It's the go ye truck, amen. What are we going to do with that truck? We're going into all the world preaching the gospel. You got a CDL, God sent you here. Amen. You can drive a big rig, come on and get with it because we're ready to put it on the road. Amen. Amen. Say amen. God is ready. God is ready. This is what the vision, the ultimate vision here is putting two of those on the road every other week. Every other week and go where the Lord says go and not sit up in a church with church people. Say amen. Don't nothing excite me about preaching to a bunch of church people that say the same amen and do the same thing every week. Nothing gets me happy about that. What gets me happy is getting out there with a bunch of drunk folks on the street and say, Jesus can change your life. Why? Because he did mine. And I was drinking that same thing you're drinking right there for a long time, Big Daddy. But Jesus is real. But, and, and here's what Jesus said. Jesus said the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are what? Few. And you see, here's the thing. You may not stand up and preach on the street. You may not go out there. But how many of y'all remember when we cast this vision right here, we started then showing how we're going to go out and do outreaches. Amen? We start with where you, you start with what you have. A lot of pastors I know, they never do a lot of outreach because they say we don't have the money. Every outreach we do, we take about 50 bicycles, go give them away in the community, draw the crowd. We take bait because we're fishers of what? Men, and we see the fish come swarming around. Swarm, there they come right there. Now what we're going to do? Set the hook and pull them in. Amen? People sitting in this church right now because we went out of these walls. I would not pastor a church that sat in the church and just preached to church folks. Say Amen. We're taking it to the streets, and this is long term. I don't know, it might come next week. Somebody might be looking at it right now on the live stream and watching this. I got a truck look just like it. They need that because I sure don't use it. Don't know. All I know to do is cast the vision and put it out there and watch folks run with it. Amen. Because the next one, how many of y'all remember this next slide we put up in front of you? Hallelujah, this was about two years ago, we said, or last year, maybe the, end, the beginning of the last year, and we said, y'all, here's where we're headed long term. This is what's coming, and I want to talk real, one more second. Well, no, I'll, I'll say it in just a second. 
Right here, this is about seven, eight, nine, ten inflatables on the left that we're going to show up and the fair coming to town. See, a lot of people, they just go out. And I learned this doing outreach a lot of times. If you just walk up into the neighborhood and into the hood and wherever you go and say, hey, come on down here to the park. I want to talk to you a little bit. I need to give you a good talking. They're not coming because <laughs> they don't want to hear what you got to say. You know why? You know what, what, what Jesus did? He always blessed the f people. Amen. Fed them, a fish, fed them with a, a two-piece fish dinner. He went around blessing the people. He went around. It's not good to do outreach with your hand empty. Amen. Amen. If you don't have nothing in your hand, people are going to look at you like, <laughs> That's a, I, they don't want to, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So I go, we're taking this thing on the road, and we're going to, I just talked to a guy this morning about purchasing and financing a whole company. Amen. First talk we ever had. But you know what? I promise you, I said, you know what? We need to be able to take these on the street, find the park, blow it up, put nine, ten of them out there, and roll with it. Amen. We're going to have it. It's going to be, and you know what? We're going to be able to load it right up in that truck along with the bikes, along with the band equipment, along with everything we got. And then we're going to have the stage at, and at that all. It's because we're going to, we, how many of y'all think we got a pretty good band? We're going to put them to work. Amen. They're not going to come in here and just do church. Say amen. We're going to put them on the streets, put them out in the park, put them out there singing the gospel. Amen. Amen. And here's what, here's what the Lord showed me. He said, well, what, and see, what we started doing, we started putting this vision out. People start getting excited. Amen. How many of y'all excited about your vision? You might not be excited about yours, but you can be excited about the churches. Amen. Some of y'all don't know where you're going, and you're going to wonder why you never got nowhere. You wake up at 65, and I don't know what I'm, I don't know what I'm doing. You don't have any vision. You write the vision what? Down. Make it what? Plain so that you can get busy running with that vision. Everyone I've written down has come to pass. Say amen. Everyone that I put on paper and I start running for, they all come to pass. Say amen. Why are you so excited? Why do you sweat a lot? Why do you start spitting all the time? You know what? I'm excited that this is real. Amen. And we're going with those to the neighborhoods. We're going in those trucks. And you know what? We're going to pull up and we're going to take living faith out onto the community. All this, we've already said it, this region is in revival. Amen. Yeah. Well, we're not just going to pray it. We're going to go see all of them. Amen. Yeah. We're going to go make sure they're in revival. We're going to go tell them how good God is. Hallelujah. So the next slide right here, the Lord moved us after three short years. In right here. And I'm sitting here, boy, I got so happy last night. Boy, I'm sitting here. I mean, I got happy. I got putting all this stuff together because I'm ready to put it on paper, put it down. I'd already had it written out. Now I want to put it on graphics and put it on Photoshop and make everybody look at it. I want you to look at the vision of what we're going to do. Because everything that we say is going to happen, it's going to happen. Amen. Oh, yeah. And I mean, like I say, you don't have to believe oh, that's just cocky, that's arrogant. That's fine. It's what the Bible says. I got an appointment with every dream. Amen. Watch, watch this right here. He moved us over here with 200 parking spots, 6 acres, 30,000 square feet total in this building. Why would God be accommodating us that way? Why would he be blessing us like that? Well, I come to find out, I don't know, but uh, I didn't go look around at all the churches. But really, when I start looking around, I start seeing that three years ago we cast a vision of 18 wheelers rolling. And then I start riding to the back of this building and I see we got two loading docks right back in the back of this building. <laughs> oh, that's just a coincidence. It ain't no coincidence. They got loading docks back there waiting on living faith to show up. Ooh, and I, got to th I said, God is accommodating the whole vision. Everything that we put on paper, he said, you know what? No, they don't need that building. They, they need to wait. They need to wait. And you know what? That's why you got to be patient because God supplies the need for the vision. See, some people wonder why their, their needs aren't being met. They're not doing anything. But if you'll get your feet to step in and put your feet on, the Bible says God will give you every place the sole of your foot shall tread. Amen? You've got to get busy about God's business so he can get busy about your business. What is this over and about? Yeah, it's over and about. Well, already we have, when the vision we started, remember now the hotel, this is a little different than the hotel. 
This is a little different than six ladies sitting in the Holiday Inn saying, Hallelujah, glory. We played the music in that Holiday Inn on my laptop three years ago. Three years ago. We were playing music on speakers blowing out of my laptop. PowerPoint, YouTube videos right there on the wall, wasn't we? We still had church. Why? Because we wasn't going by what we saw. We, were, we brought this, some come pregnant with a vision, amen, and said, I bet you everything the Lord showed me is going to come to pass. I didn't know how fast, and then really, most people don't. It's just, you know what? We got people that are hooking up and agreeing with us. The Bible says where two or three agree on anything, it shall be done. So I mean, when I cast vision, people just, everybody don't plug in. Some people are sleepy. But some people just say, glory to God. And you see them jumping up and down in their seat. They're like, oh, that's coming. That's come. I can't wait because most people can't wait to get out on the streets and share their faith with somebody else. Amen. 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 You know God's not interested and he's not impressed by your church attendance. You know you're never going to get to heaven and God said, well, you attended here, you attended here, you attended Brownie Point, you attended here, you attended here. Oh, you're doing great. You atten- now he's going to say, what did you do with the Jesus you had? And if you only dated him on Sunday and Wednesday, you didn't do a whole bunch. <laughs> he don't want to date you. He wants to marry you. Amen. He wants to go home with you every day. He don't want you to come visit him at the church. So when you take him home with you, a person excited about the gospel runs to the world. A person excited about religion runs to church. A lot different service today, but I got to get this out. Amen. Lord done accommodated the vision and said, you know what we're going to do? Get them in that building right there. It's been sitting empty about six months, I think, by the, or three or four months by the time we got here. And we were looking. I had already been praying. I had been on the Internet looking for portable buildings so we could have Bible college over there on that property we were on. I had looked and we'd already met with the lady twice about clearing a lot right over here. I need, the, I need your land. I need more land. I need buildings. We got to do something. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, Danielle. Say Danielle. Say Pastor Danielle. See, it's good to have a good wife. Amen. She brought me over here. We walked through it. Everything was, there was leaks and stuff coming in. It was hot and it was stinky by that time because it was some leaks in the building and this, this and that. And we walked through looking around and I'm like, not at all what I want to see, but it'll work. It, it's, 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 you know. So we start taking the steps, start taking the steps. How much y'all want? Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. My God is big. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we went ahead and we went, and the Lord blessed us and opened these doors. Go to the next one, Chris. And then we met up over here. How many of y'all remember, remember that right there? We had a men's breakfast one morning. We come over here. Everything starts just, we said, you know what? We're going to have our breakfast. And we're going to come over here and put chairs out because we're going to have a meeting in here the next morning. We hadn't got the building yet, but I asked the guy at the bank, can I meet in here and pray with our church? He said, yeah, go ahead. He didn't know what prayer was to us. It was not a moment of silence. Bow your head for a moment of silence. We're going to pray about this building. Um, now we're getting here to rejoice. Amen. Hallelujah. Now watch this because you go to the next one. I got some pictures coming right here. We got in here and the message says right here, the first message, we're going to get a new projector here. That's on the vision too. First message, God is big. How many of y'all getting in here? Remember, get, y'all remember those lights right there that I said the first thing we got to do is get them things out of here. What that, what's the first thing that went? Them old fluorescent lights hung down about eight and a half feet high. Right over everybody's head. I don't know. I guess, I don't know. But they're gone. Right? Amen. Praise the Lord. And they're coming out of the kitchen, and they're coming out of the kids' room, and they're coming out of right back there too. Amen. Hallelujah. I can just tell you that straight, <laughs> straight up. First message, God is what? Big. Amen. And I looked up, and I saw some of the same ladies that was at the Holiday Inn. Hearing that message, our God is big. He's doing what he said he would do. We got loading docks. We got 30,000 square feet. God is about to bring this vision to fruition. Amen? And I mean, I tell you, see, so you don't have to, you, you can wonder. If you're a visitor, excuse me, because I'm going to be excited today. Amen? I left Louisiana not knowing the first person in Niceville. Didn't ever shake anybody's hand and didn't know any person. And the Lord sent us down here with a vision, and I'm starting to just see it, walk right in the middle of it. And you know what? That vision will not tarry. I got an appointment to see this whole thing come to pass. Say amen. Amen. Oh, wait. Give me that that right there, John. Praise the Lord. Go to the next slide. (laughs) Next slide. Acts 13, 52 says this, and they were all filled with what? Joy. 
What happens when you start walking out? See, most people lose their joy because they never see God do anything. Acts 5, 13, 52. Look at Miss Joan right there. That's Miss Joan right here. Miss Joan got her hands up and took off running. Right there. Why are you doing that? Well, the Bible says that the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit and filled with what? Joy. So I looked for the lady that I first saw. Go to the next slide. I looked for the lady that I first met, and I said, I want to dance with you right now. And I got Miss Gail's hand, and me and her were spinning around the front of this building right here. First lady I ever saw in that Holiday Inn while everybody else was late, and we got happy together. Amen. Watch what God is doing. Amen. Watch what the Lord, the Lord is about to show out around here. Man, you get ready, get raised. Have you ever heard him get ready, get ready, get ready? Because it's coming. <laughs> and if it don't stir nobody else up but me, that's good. Because I'll tell you what, I am enjoying what I watch God do. Amen. Watch the next slide. We start, look at that room right there. Lord just gave me the message to preach before we came over here. I remember the last sermon we did at that other building was enlarge the place of your tent. Enlarge your tent. Enlarge where you're living at. Enlarge your vision. Enlarge, stretch forth the curtains. Make it bigger because I want to do more. And the Lord had just told us that, so I didn't understand why. I said, Lord, we barely holding everybody in this other building over here right now. We got enough room. We don't need to make it just a whole, whole lot bigger. He said, no, you need about 30,000 square feet. Why? Because what we're going to do is take the whole building's ours. Say amen. amen. That's a done deal. I knew that when we stepped in the door. Yeah. Amen. And right here, I, the Lord just, very, I, I stood up at Christmas, and I don't ever say things I think. I just think stuff. Because I've been around, along for this whole ride. And drove those three 26-foot U-Haul trucks down here. That wasn't fun. And didn't know any, and I saw, and I, the Lord started sharing with me and putting some things in my heart. And I stood up to go get another plate <laughs> at our Christmas party. And I looked in the room. And the word came to me, said, enlarge, place of your tent. And I just looked, and the Lord started preaching to me. He said, I told you when you stepped out in faith into the deep waters that I would hold you up and it would surely come to pass. He says, if you would dare to just believe, you would see the greatness of God. And he starts sharing. When I started walking around, while I'm talking to people, the Lord's talking to me. I started looking around. Uh, I don't know what we have that night, 170 in, our, in this fellowship hall. We found out we need a bigger building. Oh, yeah. We got to get that back fast, actually. We need the back of this building real quickly. Amen? Because the next, the next slide, what we did... We saw the building fill up on Christmas, and the Lord showed this to me like he told Abraham. He said, through you all the families shall be blessed. And the Lord gave me that scripture, and we did our Christmas outreach, and we got to have all the people come in here, and we got to see all the families blessed. Amen? How many of y'all think God is good? How many of y'all think God's bringing it to pass? How many of y'all think what you're believing for at your house is coming to pass? How many of y'all believe you have an appointment with God? destiny you have an appointment with your dreams and you know what it don't matter what it looks like right now i want you to act like you already he didn't say write the plans down he said write down your dream and your dream will carry you your dream will drive you your dream will what push you into everything that you've been looking for amen Oh, yeah, see, here's the thing. This is a faith whole thing about this church, faith church. Y'all faith church? Yes, faith church. Don't go by what I see. I go by what he said. I don't live by what I feel. I don't live. Paul said that I right now am a man in Christ. Everything that was before is gone. Everything now is brand spanking new. Amen. And you know what? We have not borrowed one dime from anybody ever. Say amen. You know what? I don't plan on it. You know what I did in the man's office where we, we're leasing this building right now? Note went all crazy on us, went about four and a half times up what it was. And he looked at me, he said, I would like for y'all to get it. How, how would would y'all be in, would y'all like to buy that building? I said, Oh, we're gonna buy it. He said, Okay, well what, you see y'all think you want to go ahead and go through that now? I said, Not right now, <laughs> not right now. That's part of the vision. We're going to, but not right now at all. No, not right now. But I said when we do, we're probably gonna bring you cash money. 
He said, well, you know, it's 2.4 million. I said, I don't care what it is. I have what I say. Say amen. amen. And I will bring you the money, and we're going to buy the building. Amen. amen. See, faith is not hope. hope. Hope says, well, I hope the Lord, hope the Lord blesses this church. This church is blessed. Amen. Man, if you can't see that by now, I don't really know what you think you're coming to. Amen. amen. Lord has blessed us far above and beyond. We're already in the overflow. Amen. We already wrote it bigger than we could believe, and God's making it hap happen and making it come to pass. Amen. So let's just go ahead and get ready. I want you to give, I want to give you a chance right now. This is the offering right here. That was a, lo a long offering message. Hallelujah. And now we're going to do a short, regular message. Y'all laughing. Oh, he can't do that. I don't know. We'll see. Hallelujah. I'm believing God. I want your vision. Everybody hold your vision up. You wrote down. Everybody hold up your piece of paper. I see some. I see a few. Yes. Glory. Hold your vision. And if you weren't here Wednesday, some people don't come to church on Wednesday. That's okay. Uh, if you weren't here, bring it either this next Wednesday or Sunday. Because what the Lord showed me was it's not okay that living faith keep seeing the blessing of God, keep walking in the favor of God, keep getting big old buildings, keep getting big old blessings, keep seeing God do abundantly above all you can imagine. And then some of the people in the church aren't seeing their vision come to faith. So the Lord told me, he said, have the people write it, write it what? Down. Make it plain. Make it plain so that when we read it, we can what? Run with it. And the Lord showed me this. People that are putting their vision in the uh, buckets right now along with your offering, amen? You're going to drop it in the bucket and we're going to have your vision. I'm going to have it at my desk during the week and I'm going to help you run that race, amen? We're going to stand in the Bible says where two agree on anything it shall be done. You can put down there, I want to buy the Walmart Corporation and you're not going to scare me. Write down your vision, make it huge, and I'm going to say, I believe right now that their kids are preaching the gospel. I believe right now every need they have is met. I believe right now they own their house. Though They owe no man nothing but to love them. I thank you, Father, that right now they are blessed and everything they touch is blessed. I thank you that they are increasing in promotion this year. Whatever it is you write down, I can hook up and agree with. Amen. So if you put it on paper and you drop it in this bucket, it goes back to my office and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to open up my mouth and speak over all these things right here. Everything you put on paper, write it down. I want to run with you. Amen. I want to run right beside you. We're going to see that whole thing. We're going to agree that your vision is surely coming to pass. And I mean, y'all say right now, hold that vision up. Say, I have an appointment to see everything on this paper. Come to pass. I have an appointment to see my dreams come true. I fully expect everything that I write down that I will see one day. This is my hopes. But right now, my faith says I have it right now in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. Go ahead, brother. Praise the Lord. I want to get you stirred up on that. Go ahead. Take the offering up if you could. There they go. Amen. Some of them sore from working out yesterday. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, some of y'all need to be getting happy while you put that in there now. Don't be quiet. Y'all see that you are not at the quiet church. The, I'm sure there's a plenty of quiet ones you can find, but this ain't it. I mean, I'm looking for the quiet church. I need somebody to just be quiet. Let me come in here and worship the Lord. This is not that place. Yeah. Amen. I think you ought to drop your, your vision in the bucket and say, Glory to God is coming to pay. Hallelujah. <laughs> I mean, I know if you believe everything you put on that paper, if you believe everything that you wrote down is going, you're going to have an appointment to see it one day. You know, depression has a hard time sticking around your house. I mean, I know depression has a, a hard time lingering and dark clouds have a hard time lingering around a person who wakes up every day, pops out of bed and says, we're going to see this vision come to pay. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know what? Like I said, nobody in here gets me happy or excited. It's the vision that keeps me going. Amen. We are not close to it yet. Let me say that. We're a baby, baby, baby church. Baby. Say baby. baby. A three-year-old is a baby now. Y'all understand, we're a three-year-old congregation. We're a baby church. People are coming and people are going. People are figuring out, is that for me? Is it not for me? And that's fine. Everybody's going to do that. But you, what you need to do is go ahead and find a place where you can hook in, grab hold of the vision, and run with the vision. Amen? Yeah. 
Because if you're still lingering and saying, well, I'll give it a little longer. Give it a little. If anybody says anything that makes me mad, I'm sure gone. You might, you might as well leave now. Amen. Because if that's what you're waiting on, somebody's going to do it. Say amen. Oh, somebody, the enemy going to make sure somebody comes across you and makes you uncomfortable or says something bad to you. I just knew they'd do it. I'm leaving. Well, go ahead and go today. Amen. I, st- I seen it was six. Amen. I'm not scared to go back down to six and see it build right back up. Amen. I promise you, God is good. Amen. Amen. So how many of y'all can stick with this right here? Because what we're seeing is God bring this thing to pass. I wake up every day and I say, well, here we go, Jesus. Let's go see what we're going to do today. He said, you ready? I said, I'm ready, Lord. He said, let's go do it. I said, let's go do it, Lord. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to see another year of all this stuff happen. Another year. A lot different today. Not a real theological, doctrinal teaching today. But you know what we're going to give you is something you can take with you and believe with you. And you're going to see all that. I like what we just did. My goodness, Lord, when he put that on my heart, I said, we'll do that right there. How many of y'all want to see your dreams come to pass? Jesus said, I, I, the thief come to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come that you might have life and have it what? In a, in just an abundant life. What do you have? I just got abundance of joy, abundance of peace, abundance of revelation, an abundance of vision keeps happening for me. Amen. But the title I wanted to show you after that, we got some more pictures, but it says, From Vision to Fruition. Say fruition. The vision shall come to fruition. What you just put on paper, you did not just write down. You expect to see it come to fruition, meaning it is not just a dream to you. It is your vision, amen? There's a difference in a dream and a vision. Your vision is on paper. Your vision is plain. You know where you're going, and you're expecting to get there one day. Hallelujah. So what you just wrote down is going to come. The Lord said this. Tell them what they put on paper is going to co- go from vision to fruition. It is going to come to fruition. And so I said, well, Lord, I want to go here. I went over here and I looked up the word. Go to, there's a definition of fruition I want to give you. Fruition. Say fruition. Attainment of anything desired. <laughs> attainment of anything that you desire is fruition. Next definition of fruition is a realization. Write it down. Write it down. If you got vision, write it. Just write it down. Because you're going to have a realization of that vision. Everybody said, what you going to do if you get down there right in Florida and it don't work? You know everybody in North Louisiana. Do you know anybody in Florida? I said, I don't know anybody down there. What you going to do if you get down there and it don't work? I said, I ain't never thought about it not working. Never have thought about it not working. Amen? Why? Because God is with us. Amen? The Bible says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the Lord will be with me. Amen? And if you got God with you, you can't lose anyway. An accomplishment. Say an accomplishment. Man, how many of y'all think we already seen God do some great accomplishments? But he told me that this, and I know this. See, some people think that this is the fruition, the complete fruition. This is baby, baby, baby stuff right here we're doing. Name it. We still got to get 18 wheelers. We still got to get on the road. We still got to get all inflatable. We still got to get to stay. We still got to get on the street. Amen? I-10 going to be used to seeing us coming. Boom, there they come. Where are they going? They just, why, don't they just know it? Don't take all that. Just go do church. Go do your little old religion and go home. No, you go do your religion and go home. I didn't get saved to go sit up in a church. That would be the most boring life you could have. Amen? An accomplishment. Enjoyment. Say enjoyment. enjoyment. Don't you go after your vision and not even stay. You just enjoy yourself. Amen? Too, too many people, they get so stressed about their vision. I'm not stressed about nothing. I'm not making it happen anyway. Amen. Enjoyment. As of something attained or realized, the state of bearing fruit. What are we at? We're going to be we at the state. See, there's a lot of that. The sower sows the word. The seed is multiplied. The word is sown. The seed multiplies. And then you see that seed bear what? 
fruit. And the Lord said this, He planted a vision in every one of you. There's no person in here that can tell me, I don't know what my, and you may not know what it is, but that don't mean God hadn't given you vision. Everybody came here with a purpose. Everybody came here with a plan. Everybody came here with a dream on the inside that you didn't make up. You thought it was your dream. God put that in you. And the Lord told me to tell you that it is time to see it in realization. It's time to hold it if you can't hold it right now. It's time to walk in the plan of it this year. Say this year. year. See, just like we we are seeing everything fruition. I'm seeing the fruition. Didn't see it in the hotel. Six people. But we're seeing it just start bearing what? Fruit. The state of bearing fruit. Say bearing fruit. Producing fruit. My vision will be in fruition this year. There will be a realization of everything that I desire this year. This year. See, if you got dreams in you right now, you're happy. If you got hopes in you right now, you're happy. If you got vision in you right now, you're stirred like nobody else right now. Boy, but a person with no purpose is a person with no passion. All they're doing is going to work, making a paycheck. Come back home, go work out maybe. Go do something. Go over here, come back home. Got the same routine every week. Your life is boring. All you do is the same thing all the time. You got no purpose, therefore you got no passion. But once you find out your pers- purpose, you're a person of passion. Amen? And nothing can stop a person like that. Nothing. Not bad news, not any news, not having anything that they see in front of them. You're going after everything you got on the inside. Amen? So if you don't, have, you don't know what your purpose or your dream is today, you need to find out what it is. A lot different service today. Oh, I see some visitors. But we don't, we're sharing the vision with this church today. We'd love for you to hook up. If you don't have anywhere you go to church, you need to go somewhere. Everybody in the room I'm talking to right now. Everybody. And you might as well find someone that's going to be doing something. Amen? Now, we might be different. We might get a little louder than what you used to. That's fine. We're going to get louder than that, too. Bible says, rejoice in the Lord. What? Always. And again, I say what? Rejoice. You can watch the games today. Watch Denver. What? Go watch Denver in New England. Go watch him when it's over. Go watch him when it's over. Go watch him when it's over and Tom Brady does what he does. Ah! <laughs> Go watch him when the game's over and see if they don't win the AFC Championship. And they're like, oh, whoa, yeah, we won. We come to church, got signs on front of us that says, come in here quietly. Everybody get in here, shut your mouth. You know what? You, you can go. Oh, I mean, you can go shout at the football game, shout at the basketball game, rejoice over there, holler over there, shout over there. Why? They all happy. They just won a game. We got a Jesus that was dead, buried, and raised up from the dead. And you gonna tell me to be quiet about it? He said he built me a mansion forever in heaven. And you gonna tell me to be? Let me go start a church, amen. Because the Lord said, "You let the people praise me." You let them rejoice. Amen. You shouldn't come to a church where you feel like you got to be quiet. And if you shout too much, the the head deacon might be ready to take you out of church. Why? We got some. This is a celebration every Sunday. We are celebrating the life of Jesus, celebrating the vision he put in us, and we know we're going to see it. Amen. I know I'm going to see him again, and I know I got an appointment with every one of my dreams. So, So hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. You can yeah, go ahead and act churchy with it, religious with it, whatever you want to do, but go ahead and get happy about it. Amen? Amen. Why is this going to be attained? And who's going to touch it? You're going to touch it. Who's going to have it? You're going to have it. Who's going to walk in it? You're going to walk in it. Amen. Amen. So, let's begin. This year, and this is something, all of it, understand everything that we're about to show you is over and above where we were with six people at the Holiday Inn. We had this vision a long time ago, but we're about to fruition. See the fruition. Go to the next slide if you could. There is the cafe right there. We're calling it, I don't know, I put on there, La Faith Cafe. (laughs) Whatever you want to call it, amen. We're going to put a name on it, but I just threw that up there right now. Because what is it? It's the Faith Cafe, amen. And you know what? That's what it's going to, it's going to be something real similar. I found a lot of things right here that I to put down and I uh, saw a lot of different images that I saw and I said well that's close it's not it but it's going ours will be better than that say amen 
That whole thing is going to be more like a uh, restaurant right there. And what I want to see is after every Sunday service, you can go to the restaurant down the road or you can take a right when you come out of here and come eat with us. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on in here and eat with us. Glory to God. What you going to do? We're going to feed your spirit, feed your soul, feed your body, and then exercise your body. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on in here and eat with us. And then we'll just have Ricky come up and do his. I thought you should have been out there and not have a stopwatch yesterday. You should have been down. Oh, you just got through working out yesterday, huh? There is our cafe right there. That's what, uh, along the line, I wanted to put something out there to help you guys see the direction that we're going. This year, say this year. You're about to start seeing all this stuff happen. We have only been in this building three months, three and a half, four months. Well, we get over here. Four months ago. Four months ago, we got into this building. There's been a lot of changes already, but you're going to see rapid changes all over the place. Amen. There's nothing in here close to finish, but we're about to see it all come to fruition. The vision is about to take fruition. Amen. Go to the next one. This, is be, this will be, uh, when you keep going around, that is the kids' room in the back, back here, the back, back, back right here. This is the kids' room. Uh, idea of kind of what, I, I drew something up, but I didn't like it as much. But that room, this will, ours will be a slightly smaller version. And you see the door on the side right here. But we're going to have that set up very, very, very similar, taking down the fluorescent lights in there and putting our kids in something that it don't look like we're just trying to babysit them and get them out of our way. I'm just as excited about the kids' ministry as I am everybody sitting in here. I'd rather get your kids fired up for Jesus than I had get you fired up for Jesus. Why? Now we got the whole life to see them have revival. Amen? Some of us done threw away half our life. <laughs> now I love preaching to old folks too. <laughs> Older folks, mature people. But you know what? I love seeing a kid get on fire for Jesus. Why? 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 Because if Jake gets on fire now, he got from 5 to 95 to live for Jesus. Amen. I didn't hear about it till later on in life, but I want to see our kids come to something and be excited. How many of y'all's kids are excited to come to church? Jake asked me last night, Daddy, is tomorrow church? I said, yeah. He said, oh, yes. Oh, yes. He'd rather go to church than school. I'll wake him up for school some morning. He said, Daddy, is this church day or school day? Because he's only five in kindergarten. He don't know what day it is. He's What's the day? Church or school? School. <laughs> I wish it was church. How many of y'all think your kids ought to be ready to go to church? Well, that's going to be, there's a vision right there. See, some of y'all have, have walked around the building. We're going out of the cafe, and now we're going to the kids' class. That next door right there to the left takes us into another room, and we were going to make it a Bible college room, but we just changed that recently, and we're going to come into that room, and it's going to be, this right here. It's going to be a game room in there with a ping pong table, a pool table, foosball, TVs on the wall, seats along the side over there where them kids stop running around this building like wild kids. You ever watch them as soon as we let out of church? Hey, it's like, ah, oh, let's just run. No, no, no. You got you plenty of stuff to play with. Get back there. And there's a ping pong table back there too. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Our worship leader thinks he's Miss All-Star. Amen. Went to a deal with her one time and uh, beat every guy in there, and then she beat me like three or four times. And I'm like, this ain't right now. I'm... So that won't happen here. Amen. So we'll have that shortly. Amen. But how many of y'all know that's all part of ministry? Amen. Amen. This is all part of it. You'll see this stuff quickly. Amen. Amen. Next thing you do, you keep going and you see we come to the sanctuary. How many of y'all say, just look at that wall right there right now. Just wave at it. Just wave at that wall right there. Say, see you later. You're gone right now. Amen. We're going to say it by faith. That wall comes down right there, and we add 200 more chairs. Amen. Amen. And that's what we're about to do. That wall's coming down, and that is, that's just a picture I found. It's going to be more wide open. We won't have the one screen in the middle. We'll have to go back to the two on the sides, and we are going to see. And it won't, we want people to walk in and feel, I'm impressed. You know, we've been here four months. You might not be impressed right now. I don't like the red carpet. It's coming up, too. <laughs> well, I don't mind it. Well, that's fine. I, I, I'm the pastor, and I don't like it. Amen. It's got to come up. We're going with something else. Amen. Amen. Pull it up. Amen. This ain't a church where we, everybody votes on everything. Amen. Amen. <laughs> where are we going to vote on it? No, ain't no vote going to be taken. We're just going to take it up. We're just going to be gone. Amen. amen. <laughs> Say amen. amen. And there's some things you won't like, some things you do. Amen. Just stick it out. 
I've been in church. I've been, a, I've been associate pastor for 10 years, and I've been a pastor now for going on four. And I see every time you make some kind of change and some kind of decision gets made, somebody's going to get mad. I didn't want that kind of carpet. Well, that's okay. You're going to leave Jesus? You got my seat. What are you doing? Get out of my seat. That's my chair. Lose yourself. And just run off mad, huffing and puffing. <laughs> I mean, I've been in. The music is too loud. I don't like that. It's electric. Okay, be careful now. Don't be a complainer everywhere you go. There's some people come to church and all they want to do is tell you what needs fixed. You need to do this. You need to do that. The Lord sent me here to critique this church. No, He didn't. He sent you here to get fed. And I know what He sent me here to do. And he don't send people to churches to go get them people straight. Amen? You, this needs to be done, that needs to be done. I'll tell you what you need fixed. You need to fix this, fix that, fix this, fix that, fix that. You need to find somewhere that you agree with. Say amen. There's somebody that comes up all the time telling you what needs to be changed, what needs to be fixed. I'll tell you what I don't agree with here. Tell you what, I, you, know, you know what we need to do is find somewhere where you see and you don't find everything negative and just find a place, have a seat, be fed, and rejoice that God is good. Amen? Hallelujah. There's too much of that going on. That's not going to take place here. Amen. Amen. So we're coming on into the sanctuary. Now we're going to take the next turn, and we're going to see. This is the back of the building. I went ahead and put a vision for it down because it's ours. Amen. Amen. This is the back of the building. When you come around the side, the back, there'll be a door somewhere, or a hall probably maybe right here. We turn, and we go into the back of this building right here. Some of y'all have been back there already, and some of it's already almost set up. But when you take that turn, that's what you're going to see. Something, this isn't it, but it's going to be similar and probably better than this. And the youth, I see a youth revival coming in this town. Man, I see it happening everywhere. Why do you see it? Because it follows us everywhere we go. Amen. Everywhere we've been, we've seen the youth get in revival. The youth get on fire. Amen. You turn and take this turn, and you're going to see this for this building right here. And you're going to see first-class stuff. You go on to the next stop. There's already two rooms built back there halfway. But what happens is, one of them is we're going to turn into this right here. Why? It's going to be an indoor caged basketball court. And I'm going to probably put the goals at nine and a half feet or nine feet tall. Maybe even eight and a half now. Because I used to could dunk with two hands on a ten foot, but now I can't jump that high. So we'll put it nine foot. And I want to be able to just go up and dunk on somebody. <laughs> Amen? Pastor, don't get dunked on by your pastor. Amen? You get dunked on by your pastor, that won't be good. Amen? You won't be able to receive the word. Amen? But why is all this isn't ne is necessary? See, for so long, Disney's reaching people. MTV's pumping billions into people. Trying to get your kids off track, serving the enemy, living a life of drinking, life of running around, thinking they cool, living for the weekend, stealing their life. Pumping billions into influencing them. Make it cool, make it cool, let's reach them. What if we made it cool and preached the gospel to them? What if it was cool when they come heard the word, the uncompromising word of God? What if they come up in the building and they get excited about coming to church and they hear, because we don't, we, we're going to have all, I've, I've seen these places like this before too, and I always said this, yeah, but they just water the word down. They scrape the word and they give you a little bit of piece of the word. How many of y'all think we're going to keep throwing stakes out there, amen? We're going to preach faith, we're going to preach healing, we're going to preach full gospel, we're going to preach the word no matter what the building looks like, Amen. I've seen too many places. They compromise the word because they're just trying to reach people. I'd rather you not come if you want to compromise word. Amen. Now, we're going to have all this, and then we're going to have people fired up about Jesus. Yeah, yeah let's go. We get through with church. What you going to do? I'm going to go. You want to go back? You want to go play? You're going to do that? Let's go hang out. That's fellowship. Amen. The Bible says they broke the word together, and they broke bread together, and they fellowshiped all the time together. Amen. What if everything was in the building you needed to fellowship with so you didn't have to run to the word? Be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Go to the next one right here. Projects. Everybody write these down. Here's some things that we're going to see take place. We're in the over and above already, but we're about to see it, fru say, fruition. This is all going to happen. This stuff here might happen in the next couple of months. This is just some immediate things. And this is not vision. This is to-do list. Y'all, we're going to see the whole vision come to pass. This is to-do list for this church. We will finish all rooms. Say all rooms. They're finished. This wall is knocked down. Amen. I already see it. Every time I walk in here, I see how it's going to look wider rather than longer. 
I see it, and I'm like, okay, I see what it's going to look like. Praise the Lord. Then I see it, and then we, I see the vision for the stage. See, the vision. see, we talked about moving the whole stage down a little bit to center it then. I said, no, we're not going to move it down. We're just going to make it take up the whole front. Go big, amen. That wall's coming down. All the rooms will be finished. I plan on going now and showing you the rooms. I've already showed you some of them just to give you something to grab a hold of. Signed by the road needs to be ours. It still says another church's name that it don't need to say. It needs to say living faith. Amen. Amen. And I want y'all to believe with me right there that everything that needs to take place to get that done will be done. Amen. Can y'all agree right now? That's our sign right there. We got favor with whoever owns it. Everything that needs to be freed up with that sign gets freed up quickly. Amen. Amen. It's stuck right now. We can't get it right now, but it is about to get unstuck. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That sign's ours. The sign by the building right now, we just have a temporary banner on it, and we're not going to do anything temporary. Amen. Well, it's good enough. No, it's never good enough. If you're a good enough kind of person, that's not what we are. Amen. We want to go over and above and do everything just right. Amen? What you see isn't always just right, but don't believe that we're thinking about remaining there and being stuck. Amen? Watch the next one, the sign by the building, the new awning. How many of y'all know that awning is cool and all? And it's a cool little walkway, but there's a lot of holes in it. It's cool that you can get water off of you right here and then wait on drop and then wait on a drop and then come through. And hey, I got through here without getting wet. Praise the Lord. But you know what? That only was here when we got here, so don't judge us on that. Amen. It's going to be a new one on there real shortly. Praise the Lord. Real, real shortly. Sound equipment. All of this was in storage when we came here. You might say, well, it's okay. No, 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 it's not okay. Not okay. We're going to have brand new sound equipment, brand new stuff. This monitor was in a storage building in Val P seven years ago. These speakers were in a storage unit in Val P seven years ago. That's over. That's, that's, we, we're about to get everything brand new. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. You think they sound good now. It sounds okay to me. Wait till you hear it shortly. You're going to be like, oh, that's just, just right. Praise the Lord. And that's coming very, very soon. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, y'all don't just get happy on the music part now. You're starting to shout just on that. You should have shouted on the rest of it. Man. Well, yeah. Let's go ahead and dance on the kids' church. Amen. Woo. Hallelujah. Yeah. They act right. We'll get them some good stuff. Amen. That's a joke. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Sound equipment, that's done. Parking lot lights. How many of y'all come to church yeah. on? Huh? Hey. I don't want five. He thinks I, how many of y'all come to church on Wednesday night? I'm playing. How many of y'all come to church on Wednesday night? Yeah, and you know it's like walking in the dark out there. I don't know what's up with that either, but every one of those, we're going to have lights all, out, all throughout that parking lot coming up real soon as well. Amen. That's some things that I've noticed right off the bat. I've been here four months, same, same amount of time as y'all. You don't have to come up and tell me what needs to be done. I know it. Amen. You know, this is, I, I, I got you. I see it. Amen. You know you need to change it. Yeah, I saw that. I, saw, I know that needs to be done too. Amen. And we're going to get to it. Amen. Amen. And it's all going to get done because it's all about reaching people. Amen. Go to the next slide real quick. Praise the Lord. How many of y'all can agree with all that? Wrote all that down. <laughs> Amen. Now I'll have you a printout real soon and it'll be on your refrigerator. Everything we're believing is going to happen this year. Every room, everything. And you're going to be able to, before you get your bologna and cheese sandwich, you're going to say, oh, that's done right now. And you find something on there. Sam, the equipment is in in Jesus' name. We all come together and agree, and we just see it come to pass. Amen. Amen. We started seeing all this come to pass, six people, ten people, twelve people, twenty people, thirty people. What happened? People started getting in agreement, getting in agreement, support the vision, run with the vision. You watch those games today, AFC, NFC Championship. They found a vision, and if you watch their coaches at the end of the year, they're going to say the players bought into what we was doing. I coach college basketball, and I coach high school basketball, and I coach high school football. And I'm going to tell you this, quarterback coach, everybody that we had, we had come up after the games, and everybody was say, what we was looking for at the end of the year was to be able to say, all these players bought into the vision. They, caught, they saw the coaches playing, they bought into it, and they ran with it. You watch Bill Belichick today or whoever wins the game, they're going to stand up and say, <laughs> You don't know I can joke with people right in the middle of preaching, too. You know, you watch Bill Bell, he's going to stand up and say, the players have just bought in. They're just a great bunch of guys. They bought into the vision. Amen? You know what? The teams that lose, they got a bunch of guys doing their own thing, running over here, doing it, running. And you know what? They bought into their vision, but they hadn't bought into the team's vision. Amen? How many of y'all can buy into this right here and come together and run together with it? Amen? It's a supernatural vision now. 
We're not asking everybody to make this happen for us. God's going to make this happen. Amen. Amen. Next five outreaches, we want to be on the street at minimal this year. Five. Say minimal. This could change to ten quickly. Amen. But minimal, we want to do three open-air crusades. We want to do our back-to-school outreach, and at least a Christmas outreach this year was an in-reach. This next year, we want it to be maybe an outreach on the streets and just going out blessing a whole community. Amen. We blessed our church. Lord specifically told me to bless our church this year. This next year, he's told me we're going to go out. And I don't know, it might be at Niceville High School Football Stadium. I just keep seeing something over, over there where we're just going to blow that thing out the water. Amen. Hallelujah. And we, why? Because we're getting out of the church. Jesus said, go ye into what? All the world. And preach the what? Gospel. We got good news. God's not mad at the first person. You think he's mad at you? He not, he, the devil might have been trying to condemn you, keep, keep you down. The Bible says there is therefore now no, no condemnation. Amen. We got to hurry. It's 12, 10 after 12. Uh, five minimal outreaches, three open air, back to school outreach and Christmas outreach. Like I said, those underline minimal when you write that down. I want that to, I really want to do more than that, but I don't want to also throw so much at, we got a lot of building stuff to do. There's a different part of the vision we're in right now. That fruition is just, we're just now seeing it bud a little bit. Amen. We're just now seeing it come out a little bit, and I don't want to just go ahead and just overwork everybody, but if I get enough people ready to run, Amen. now what I have down on my heart is that we have an outreach team here. Not led by me, Overall led by me, because I love outreach, but really somebody that's just jumping up saying, you know what, I'm ready to hit the streets. I want to get out on the road. I'm ready to take this thing. And really, that's what my job was at our last church. I was outreach pastor, and I was associate pastor. But what we did, we were, we were going out, and the pastor, he would just send me here. Go over here. we got to get this done. Go over here. The Lord would give him the vision, and, so, and then we would, we would execute the vision. Amen? Same thing we're going to do here, praise the Lord. But those outreaches will be coming up very soon. We'll start them probably when it gets warmer. That gives us some more cold weather months to get everything else done. Amen. Signs, this, that, this room, that room, that room. So when it comes springtime, we're ready to roll. Amen. Hit the street rolling, praise the Lord. Go to the next one. I'm going to stop probably right here. We'll let you all go get out of here. But I just, when I start putting all this stuff down, how many of you all know everything you see is going to happen? Hallelujah, we're about to see it. We're already sitting in the middle of a big, 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 big fruition of the vision. Amen. Was it easy to get there? Now, there was times I didn't feel like preaching to six people. There was times I didn't feel like going there preaching to ten. But now I knew that the vision was multitudes coming in to the kingdom of God. Amen. It says right here, ministries. There's some ministries that are started that are going to get better. There's some ministries that have not started that will begin. You need to search your heart and figure out if one of these hits you just right. Amen? That don't mean I'm going to put you over anything. Amen? But it means you can help alongside with whoever's going to be leading it. Amen? Amen. I got this down. Children's ministry this year. Danielle wants to do three super. How many of y'all remember Super Kids Sunday we did at the other building? I mean, I remember the fight with God and the, uh, Jesus and the devil and the ring and stuff. We got a big old stage up here now. We can get it real cool. We're going to do, we want the kids to minister to the adults three times this year at least. Amen. And we're going to, it's going to be like a big production when you come in here. People are going to come on a regular Sunday. The kids are going to be up here and they are going to be up here ministering the word. It's going to be real, real, real cool. Amen. I mean, I remember the last one. Last one was over the top, man. Everybody, we got it on YouTube if you want to go watch it. Next right here, our youth, uh, Danielle wants to do a, a children's camp this summer. If you have kids, we're having a kids camp this year, and we're going to do it at probably that, what's your that package, you hit, what's that name? Whack it a poochie, something, something, yeah, whatever it is. Some kind of what? Tim, Tim Poochie, Tim Poochie camp down here. And uh, Danielle has that on her heart, and we want to go out there with all your kids, take, the, take a band, go out, do a three-night camp with them during the summer, and get them away from you. Amen. There's a strategy for kids' camps, and that's to get them away from mom and dad, get them away from school, get them away from their friends where they can just hear from God. Amen. There is, uh, and uh, we've seen revival in all kind of kids and youth. Amen. And uh, music ministry, that's something if you have on your heart, you need to see Miss Angela. Don't be, I mean, if you, start this, you want to use your gifts. Amen. And if you can't sing, don't say you can. Amen. If you sing good in the car, I sing good in the car now. 
I mean, I get in the car and boy, I, I said, man, you know, I might even change. I might just start singing. But I can't sing. And if I got up there, we'd run people out the door and they wouldn't be coming into the church. Amen. But if you got a music gift, you know if you do or not. Amen. It's time to go ahead and use that gift for the kingdom. Amen. And we'll put you up there. And if you can't sing, we'll just turn you all the way down. Something wrong with my mic. Ain't nothing wrong with your mic. Praise the Lord. You just worship. Amen. <laughs> Glory. Oh, yeah, the tricks of the ministry. Amen. Now, prisons. We got to be in some prisons shortly. We saw revival in prisons in North Louisiana all over the... We saw where we started with six men. It turned into about 80, 90 men coming to a cafeteria. And we saw the prison ministry skyrocket. We saw people taken off for Jesus in the prison. And revival broke off, broke out in every cell block. Man, it's, it's a cool... It's, oh, that's jail. How, you can call it what you want to. I was there. And I saw every man hungry for the word of God. Not every, some of it was just fake, but most of the, what I saw was real. We got to get in some prisons shortly. Nursing home, Miss Robin has some new vision for that this year. She'll be sharing with us Tuesday. It's going to be big. How many of y'all think them people in the nursing home, I don't care if they're in a wheelchair, they have a spirit that is alive unto God. Amen? Amen. We, their, their spirit man is alive unto God. Praise the Lord. Did y'all hear what I said? They're, not, they're still here. Their body may not be functioning like it used to, but their spirit is alive. Next thing right here, we're going to the nursing home. Bible college, I want to see more students next year than we got this year. And th this year we got 20, 24, I think, counting both years. Bible college, just something, another above and beyond thing the Lord just blessed us with right out of nowhere. Real cool. Drama team. We need some people that like to do drama in this church. I've been casting this, but if you are good at drama, you don't mind getting up, doing skits, doing some stuff like that, see Chris right after church and let him know that I like to do drama. Put me up there, and I want to get up in front with the spotlight on me and do a skit. And we're going to use you. Amen? Media ministry, y'all see the, we, have, we got blessed with about fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars $16,000 worth of TV equipment this year. Another pastor said, I'm not using it, you can have it. Don't buy nothing, just take it, put it up. We're streaming right now, and we're on YouTube every week, but we're streaming right now. So be smiling, because he's going through, I told him to go through the crowd a lot, because I don't always get to see everybody, I don't want to see who's really awake. I'm playing with somebody right now. But singles ministry is about to start here, too. We're getting more and more single folk. I'd rather you find them here than I had find them down at the beach. Amen? Amen. Amen. I found that, yeah, we met on a blind date, but then we started going to a singles ministry in Shreveport, Louisiana, and we started hanging out together. Group fellowships, singles fellowships are a good thing, and the more and more single people we get, the more and more the Lord starts putting it on my heart, just walking around. You need to be ministering to them. You need to give them something. You need to be ministering to them. You need to be. So, you know, the more we grow, the more ministering we can do to people. Amen. That's what the church is about. Praise the Lord. Prayer group already meets at 830 this morning. Men's ministry, women's ministry, and the fitness ministry are all something that's already going and all just going to multiply. Amen. Amen. Find you somewhere. Why do we share that? That's the vision. You're a part of this vision. Amen. You're a part of this. And if you're not a part yet, all the way locked in, I encourage you. We're having a good time over here. Amen. We're seeing God do everything he said he's going to do. And grab your place. Grab hold of where you can serve and say, Lord, I want to be a blessing right here. I see you doing something in the kingdom right here. I see that you're going to reach the lost right here. If you got reaching the lost and going doing outreaches on your heart, this is the place for you. Now, if you are ready for another religious meeting and another stained glass windows and a pipe organ, this ain't the place. I just got to tell you, this is not going to be for you. Some people are trying to make it for them, and they're like, I'm going to try to hold out, but I need my religion. I need my fix. I need my religious traditional fix. You won't get it here. We're not going to be that. That's not us. Never going to revert back to tradition or religion. Amen? We want to give you a right now word from a right now God to change your right now life. Amen? Hallelujah. So right now, I want you to say it again right now. I have an appointment this year. Personally, I have an appointment this year. Personally, to see every dream, every desire, everything that I put down on paper that I run toward, I will have an appointed time to meet that dream face to face. Live in faith this year 
will see the dream come to pass. Gospel is going out of this church multiple ways. Preaching the gospel in the prison, in the nursing home, in the school, at the college. Living faith is impacted. This region with the gospel of Jesus Christ. People realize who they are in Christ. What they have in Christ right now. Spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. This year, multiple, 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 multiple seeds will go forth to produce harvest. Our words bring it to pass. This vision, it is written, and now it is spoken, and it shall surely come. In Jesus' name, I believe it, I receive it right now. In the name of Jesus, rejoice like you believe something. Hallelujah! Hey! Glory! Glory! Act like you believe. Act like you believe. Don't say you believe. Act like you believe. Act like you believe. I believe that. I believe that. Do you really believe it? Hallelujah. I believe that. I believe that. Do you really believe everything you put on paper? Your kids are not going to be lost to the devil. Your kids are going to sell out to Jesus. Amen. Your kids are going to come out of their shell and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Your kids are going to carry the gospel around the world. Devil is going to take his hands off right now. Right now, I bind up the enemy in the name of Jesus. Whatever we bind is bound. Whatever we loose is loosed. I lift up some parents right now concerned about their children. Enemy, take your hands off. We're in agreement right now. We bind up the enemy. We loose the power of God. We thank you, Father. Deception is gone. Blinders are taken off. I thank you that their eyes are open to Jesus and to see who they are in Christ Jesus. And I thank you, Father God, that they realize this is the real life. We are living the real life. We're, re we're really living the good life. And I thank you, Father God, that they just fall in to the plan God has for their life this year in the name of Jesus. Everybody say Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bow your head. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You want to start, we're still in January, and some of you, it's just been year after year, year after year, hadn't, hadn't a whole lot changed, hadn't a whole lot changed, but you want to say, this year, this is my year, not going to go through another year going through the motions, this is the year that everything changes at my house, everything changes at my house, this year, radical change is what I'm expecting, how many of y'all expecting radical change this year? A lot of hands, my goodness. My, my, my. That just tells me right there that some of you aren't satisfied with where you are right now. And the Lord showed, told me to tell you this, the vision shall come to fruition. You'll see an accomplishment of the things you're believing for. You're going to see it radically take place in your life. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, if you're not sure right now, not sure right now that you know Jesus, you're not sure that you're born again, did all, it, it all starts right there. You may have been in church and been a good person. Good people don't go to heaven. Good people don't go to heaven. Wow. Good people don't make it in. Born again people make it in. Jesus said a man must be born again. You can be as good as you want to be. I keep all the commandments. You can keep all the commandments and go to hell. How do you get in? You accept Jesus and call on Jesus. You've been in church. You've been doing good. But have you made Jesus the Lord of your life? There's only, there's, there's, a, there's a time that this is going to mean more than anything in the world. And that time may be coming. Jesus may be coming back shortly. But some of us, our time's going to expire here. And we're going to pass on over to the other side. And then we'll see face to face our Creator. How many of y'all know for sure and don't, how many of y'all want to know for sure and don't know for sure that you're saved right now, born again? I see your hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Glory to God. That's praise the Lord. That's awesome. Awesome. Hallelujah. I want everybody to pray this prayer with me right now. Say, Father God, I come to you 
In Jesus' name. Your word says, if I believe in my heart, if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, I will be saved. I do believe, I do confess that Jesus is Lord of my life. And I am born again forever. I am a child of God. I have the vision of God, the plan of God. Right now, I make it my purpose to run my race fixed on Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Rejoice with that one right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Another one. God said he would have come for one. He would have come for one. Jesus would have died for one sinner. Amen. Hallelujah. How do you get in? Believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth. Jesus is Lord. What happened? Somebody just got saved. Another mansion just got built. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, let's get ready to go home. Have a seat real quick. Praise the Lord. Let's get out of here. Y'all can come up. Uh, Angela, you can strum something real quick. Jam something. Turn it up. Uh, we, I want to rejoice. Praise the Lord. Well, matter of fact, band come up. Hallelujah. We'll leave on a song. We'll leave on a song. We can't cast vision and then leave religious. Hallelujah, Miss John. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Moving on up. Graduation. Fruition. Amen. Going out. Well, I was looking. I was thinking about even our Bible college. We didn't come here to raise up church people. We come here to raise up, raise up mighty men and women. And in Christ Bible College, what we want to do, I even see it now. I'm seeing more of it now. The vision for it, I didn't have it first in the Lord. You just start something, the Lord gives you the vision. Bible college, we didn't, we're not just there just teaching. Now, you can come and just increase your Bible knowledge, but we're raising up ministers to go out into the world to, to bring this whole thing to pass. Amen. So, really, I'm excited about Bible college and seeing the whole thing take place. And I, it just made me think of it when you're talking about throwing up the hats and seeing it take place. This whole crew over here was uh, right over at the hotel just three, year, three and a half short, you know, short years ago to me. Amen. So, God is good. He is good. I want to go back to the picture of the kids' church real quick. If you could, the kids' church. There's what we're shooting for. That's going to be our first thing to believe to knock out. And I really want to do the kitchen and the, 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 that and the kids' church at the same time. Amen. The kids' building, though, that room right there, I've already priced everything, got it all on paper. Get ready to give. Amen. Yeah. If you don't like offerings either, you won't like this church. Amen. We're doing something, and it's not free. Say amen. So we're going to give and we're going to support the ministry. We're going to see all this happen. We don't borrow money. How come you don't borrow money? We got generous givers. Amen. Yeah. So what we're going to do, this is about fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars $1,600 right here. You know there's about 100 people in this room. That's all I'm going to say. Amen. Amen. This 16, there's $1,600 right here to get this room finished. You think it's a lot more. No, that's some gallons of paint, some new chairs for about $800. And then the, the, with the screen, the flat screen TV, the, the work in there, all of, it's not much. We're going to rip up the carpet back there and put down new stuff. And we might even leave and put some uh, stuff down that's a little bit more reasonable that's good for kids to play on. Amen. So really, we're not look at, you look at that and you say, it's going to be millions. No, that's seventeen, sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars $1,700 right there. Amen. Amen. And what we cast the vision, make it plain. I want to make it plain so that you can read it, see it. And then run with it. Amen. All my job is, is, is to cast the vision. And now our job is just to run with it. Amen. This is, we're going to take up an offering right now for that kid's classroom. And I want to knock it out. I would love today, though, that enough also come to finish that kitchen is what I'd love. But, praise the Lord. I'm always looking to go a little bit faster than everybody else. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, you just give, if you don't, yeah, that's good word, because a lot of, that boy only had two fish, 
He said, I don't have a lot to give. God, Jesus will take it and multiply. Amen. You sow in your faith anyway. Don't sow your money without putting your faith out there. Amen. You don't give money to a church thinking you're paying your dues. You're mixing it with your faith right now. Amen. Whatever God puts on your heart to give. And if he don't tell you to give anything, I wouldn't give a dime. There won't be anything happen. It won't be a blessing. Some people get mad when you take up offerings. I've always said, we're not looking for you to meet our needs. We're looking for God to meet them. Amen. So we just put the need, put the need out there, put God out there, and then give people the opportunity to give. Amen. And all we're doing is giving you an opportunity to be a blessing. And I believe every need at this church is met. I believe the 18 winners cranking up. I want to hear it. What's that? That's living faith. Sound like living faith right there. Amen. Why? Because everything, we get all, everything in here done, that done. I, gear, I guarantee you we take and be faithful over the little things God's given us to do. He'll make us ruler over much. Watch it happen. Amen. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give. We thank you, Father God, that we are blessed to be a blessing. I thank you, Father God, that we give generously. We give, Father God, from the heart. We give with faith right now, knowing that we're sowing into a vision, Father God. We're putting money into your kingdom, and we thank you, Father God, that we want to be a good steward of the money you've given us, and we sow it into the kingdom, and we thank you, Father God, that you give back. We thank you. We've been faithful over a little. You're going to make us ruler over much we thank you for it we're going to rejoice about it right now in the name of Jesus we thank you father we can't stop singing about it we can't stop singing we can't stop I can't stop I can't stop singing amen I just can't stop singing amen I just want to sing about it amen we thank you father in Jesus name I just can't stop singing I just can't stop singing amen I just can't stop Y'all got the clue yet? Yeah? yeah. We go, ushers, come on. Everybody get ready to give. Drop it in the bucket and rejoice. We're praising over the vision. And then you're dismissed. Praise God. Kill these lights real quick, Tim, and then we're going to go ahead and give. I can't stop singing, singing, singing about you. I can't stop shouting. Whoa. Can't stop, I won't deny it Nothing's ever gonna keep me quiet You have saved my life I can't stop singing Whoa, whoa, whoa I can't stop singing Whoa, whoa, whoa I can't stop singing I was lost with blinded eyes Searching for the meaning of my life When you found me I was bound by sin and shame Your voice of freedom called my name When you found me Now I say, now I see Your love is shining light into my soul Whoa.
more alive now We're gonna rise up, nothing's gonna stop us now We are your people living in your freedom Nothing's gonna hold us down We are alive now, we're gonna rise up Nothing's gonna hold us now We are your people living in your freedom Nothing's gonna hold us down Nothing's gonna hold us down Singing, singing about you, I can't stop shouting. Whoa, can't stop, I won't deny it. Nothing's ever gonna keep me quiet. You have saved my day. Can't stop singing. There's a story in the Bible about this paralyzed guy that he couldn't get to Jesus, and it said he had four crazy friends. And his, his friends busted a hole in the roof, and they lowered this paralyzed man to Jesus. What you need is four crazy friends that'll help you sometime get in the presence of God because everybody don't come in here feeling like doing, what are they doing, the hokey pokey? I don't know what they do. All I know is they're getting in the presence of God the way they do it, amen, and they're just dancing around together. But you need to find some friends that'll help you get in His presence instead of get you out of His presence. It might not be dancing like this. It might be dancing like you dance, like you want to dance. But you know what we're going to do? You don't, the Bible says you dance before the Lord with all your might, amen. So what I want to do, we're going to end here. I want them to stay put, and if you want to join in and dance at church, you might, I've never done that before. That don't really matter. There's a lot of things I had never done before, but you start doing what the Bible says do. And then you start seeing what the Bible says you can have. Why is the vision coming to pass? Things like this start happening. We start rejoicing, acting like we believe. Faith is not a belief, it's an act. you got to start acting like what you say and you really believe. Amen? I believe it, Lord. Well, he says, go ahead and show me if you believe it. What would you do? How would you act if you already had it? How would you act if you already had it? How would you act if you already had it? How would you act? I don't know. I believe you would get excited. I believe you would. Hey, tell Chris, take the words down. Put the 18-wheeler on. Put the 18-wheeler on. Hallelujah. Put the 18-wheeler on. Now let's do it one more time. One more time and let's go. Yeah, no words, no words. The truck, the truck.
you believe. Everybody you believe. Hallelujah. Feel the kingdom Woo, dance right where you sit. Feel the battles won. For you I'm dance not right afraid. Where you are. For you the price hey. is paid. For you there's victory. Because Rich of up. you my heart Rich screams. Up. I am fair. I am free. You're free. You're free. I am free to dance. Yeah. I am free to live for you. Yeah, I am free. You know what? Why? Because you believe. We have this hope. We, we believe, amen. And then we act like we believe something, amen. Faith is an act. If you can't dance right in the middle of looking at your hard situation, God says if you can't dance while it don't look good, it may not get to looking good. Faith is an act. You act like you believe the Bible right when you're in the middle of seeing no bills paid. You got a doctor's report that says you're not going to make it. What do you do? I think I'm going to laugh at the devil and say, you a lie. I believe I'm going to be having everything God said I'm going to have. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. He tries to keep you fearful. You can't stay scared and dance around the building. <laughs> you know what? I didn't, and you don't feel like doing this. And I don't want anybody to think just because you don't do it that there's anything different. Now, you know what? We want everybody to come in with the atmosphere free. Amen. Amen. Why? If it's free, you, you got a chance of getting free. Amen. And then you got a chance of seeing all the vision come to pass. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. God is good. We love every one of you. Wednesday night, we're going to be back here every Wednesday. 7 o'clock is really some of our best church. And uh, if you can make it, try to make it. If you can't make it, no big deal either. Get here when you can. You need to get fed. The biggest deal for a believer is to stay fed. Amen. The enemy wants to get the sheep moved out of the pasture. Think the grass is greener over here. Go do it. Go do it. You just get where you're supposed to be and stay fed. Amen. Stay fed, and you're going to be strong. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Stephanie, pray for us, and we're going to leave. Bless.